G'day, I am Alistair, and this is an E5-2690 V4 um, Intel CPU. It's a socket 2011 CPU, or 2011-3. That means that on the back it has 2011 little pads for the pins to touch. And um, let's bring up the spec sheet for it. So this is the, uh, from the Intel Arc. It's ARK as opposed to ARC for their, uh, their new video cards. But anyway, we see that the CPU, uh, if you bought them in trays of 1,000, um, cost uh, over $2,000, $2,000 US dollars. And I paid 100 New Zealand dollars for that, for this, shipped, uh, including GST. Um, so that's about 60 US dollars. So that's uh, quite, quite a drop in price. The CPU was introduced in 2016, there we go, quarter one, uh, and I am going to put it in my uh, sort of server machine, which primarily runs my um, security system, security cameras. Now, uh, I am upgrading from an E5 2678v3, so it's one generation behind, um, and I think the the main thing is, for, for me at least, is the drop from the 22 to 14 nanometer uh, process. It should be a bit more power efficient. But in saying that, also got a couple of extra cores and the base and turbo frequencies are both higher on the new CPU. So that's um, going to improve things a bit. And also uh, supports DD, uh, does it have it here? Uh, here we go, 2400 as opposed to 2133. So I might get a bit of extra memory bandwidth out of it. Well, at least without having to do anything uh, crazy with the over overclocking things. So that's that's the CPU. Let's take my server down from the shelf and go ahead and upgrade. So this is the computer we're going to upgrade up here. I'll uh, just unplug everything. Okay, it looks like it. Do the upgrade on the ground. Okay, let's open this thing, thing up and see what's inside. And just get that side. Okay, we'll probably need to give this a bit of a vacuum. But currently it's got 16 gig of RAM and it's a rather generic heatsink with a knock to a fan on it. And this is an R9280, which I'm going to replace shortly. And there's a few hard drives in here as well. Um, and an SSD somewhere. So what we're going to do is we're going to take this heatsink off, which looks like we're going to have to take the fan off to be able to do it, which is always fun trying to get them on and off. But uh, yeah, let's uh, get a little bit closer in here. Let's start by taking this fan off. And get it unclipped. There's one side. Okay, well, grab that once the. Uh... Okay, that's the other. Okay, let me put that to the side. All right, excuse any mess. I'm partway through a large number of projects. Okay, I might just get something to clean that uh, CPU off with. So let's could probably do quite a lot to tidy up in here, but there's a bit of a wipe off before removing it. I'll often use isopropyl alcohol or something like that to remove the, the silicon grease a bit more thoroughly, but that seems to be coming off all right. Cool, cloud of dust. 
Okay, that looks good. Now, if you lift these levers in a particular order, this one first. I can't lift this one because this is the, uh, the tail of this lever is blocking it currently. So that one's the first one. That one's the second one. And then I should lift that off. And lift out the CPU. And there we have a shiny, not, well, somewhat shiny CPU. Okay. The new one. Okay. Let's move that out of the way. Okay, and that should go that way. Like so. Let's put that down. That one first. That one second. And then we need a glob of thermal paste, which I've got this Chinese GD9000, sorry, 900 paste I've been using for a bit. And it's quite a big CPU. So I need a fair amount. And also I want to wipe off the excess from the top of this one. Actually, I'm going to give that a vacuum before we put that back. Okay, that was easy enough. So I guess I'll put this back facing this way again. these screws lined up. Okay, that's tight, that's tight, that's tight. Okay, that all looks good. Okay. Now, to get the fan back on. After, I give it a quick vacuum. Okay, and these are always fun to blow that way. So I can put it on the other side. Up to that side. Like so maybe. I always have terrible trouble with these clips. Assume we've got it on the right way. No, it doesn't go on that one either. Okay, there's one. Two. Okay, it's holding that one on. Okay, that's on. Don't actually get to see it inside this case, so the actual cable management is not such a big deal. But it's good to have the cables, make sure they're well out of the way of the fans and things, just in case. I think that'll do. Okay, I will hook up a screen and we'll see if that boots. Okay, and here we have the moment of truth.
Okay, nothing yet. Diagnostic LEDs are still doing things. Okay, well, sometimes it does indeed not boot up. We've got fans spinning everywhere, so that's a positive sign. Hard drive's not doing anything, so. What I should have done is got it to boot before uh, plugging it in to make sure that everything was uh, plugged in correctly. Okay. Now, let's try again. In fact, I'm going to do some diagnosis. We'll be back later. So it turns out that everything was okay. It was just a faulty video cable. Um, this is an old monitor, it doesn't have HDMI on it, and it's an old graphics card as well. I was using a uh, DVI to HDMI um, adapter, and something was not working, but that's right. Um, it's all going, in theory. The CPU temperature is fine, so that would tend to indicate that it is running. So let's discard changes and exit and see if Windows boots. Now it's always been a little bit, little bit dodgy about booting Windows. Uh, occasionally it freezes during startup. One of my to-do list things is to install Windows 11 on it, which technically doesn't qualify, it doesn't have TPM uh, on the motherboard, and I'm not sure about how the CPU is new enough. I feel like that possibly it's not. So that'll be Interesting. Anyway, it's now booting into Windows. Let's see if we get to the desktop. Apparently, this little animation here is called the Tumblr, and possibly another name, I can't remember. Uh, but that was a comment on one of my previous videos. So there are a few upgrades to go in this machine. The CPU was the first one. I've got the graphics card to replace, and I've got three six terabyte hard drives to go in here which came out, of, came out of a RAID system. There were six of them. One of them was dead on arrival, wouldn't power up or anything. Um, might be dead electronics. The other attempted to spin up and the third failed drive started out okay but then developed lots of errors. So I think the, those drives have been running continuously for seven years so that's quite a while. And what can happen is that once you pull them out, they sometimes don't start up again. So you can have, if you're um, shifting RAID arrays that have been running for a long time, it's best to try to not power them down. Or at least do so for only a very short, short while. So this is going to take a while. I'm going to leave this and we'll come back and hopefully it will boot. It might be doing some sort of, oh, here we go. Maybe. Maybe running updates. I don't know. It does have some updates, updates pending. This is also a very old Windows install. I think it might go back to Windows. It might go back to Windows Vista, but I think it's probably newer than that. It might only be Windows 8. But if it's Vista, it would have been Vista 7, 8, 8.1, 10. And I'm going to do a fresh install of 11 because uh, <laughs> this is not running so well. Okay, let's come back to this later. Okay, so everything installed in the end. Uh, it was a bit more trouble than uh, I demonstrated in the video, but um, it's booting. I really do need to reinstall Windows. I think that installation is, is kind of reaching the end of its life. And just a, you know, uh, a fresh install with only the uh, applications that I'm interested in. I have here some benchmarks. Um, we can see that there's a bit of sort of 10%, probably 11% if you do invert that improvement. Uh, in single core and a lot more in multi-core performance so uh, good to see there is an improvement uh, but if we scroll down there is one in single core the photo filter uh, Geekbench um, test is actually faster on the old CPU for single core but multi-core it's not but otherwise it's pretty much uh, Pretty much faster all around, which is a good sign. 
So let's log in to the computer remotely. And um, we see I've got blue iris running. And as per usual, there is at least one camera that's not functioning. I haven't made a workout what's wrong with this one. It might be a cable. Or the camera might be dead, so I need to need to test that that cable. I've uh, plugged and unplugged it in various locations. I seem to typically have one camera not working all the time. It's usually this one that's the, the problematic one. But um, this is a 8K Rio Link camera, H10, um, RLC A10. And I've had lots of trouble. This is a I've had three of them and none of them seem to work properly. This is mostly going, sometimes sometimes it um factory resets itself. Anyhow, let's load up Task Manager and have a look at all these glorious cores. So there is 28 of these little CPU graphs, which is uh, quite nice. We see 8%, but it, it varies quite a lot as to uh, how hard the CPU is working, depending on uh, quite often related to Blue Iris. I've got some AI software. So open project AI, AI project something something anyway but it does object detec detection so it detects whether there's a, a car or person or something in the field of view which is quite good so was this upgrade worth it uh, yeah, probably not worth the effort um, but not not for uh, any 10, 10 to 15 percent performance improvement but but we might see a improvement in the power usage because we've gone from 22 to 14 nanometers and that's generally generally there's a uh, power savings associated with it although the TDP on the new CPU is a bit higher uh, given that it has much higher clock speeds and a couple of extra cores so um, the upgrade was a success I think I am definitely going to need to update Windows so that'll be a, another video I think I'll throw an NVMe SSD in there uh, and see how things go so I'll need to extract Blue Iris, the Blue Iris, Iris configuration, um, Unify, and maybe a few other bits and pieces uh, and get them going. But that's the subject for another video. So I hope you've enjoyed this one. It didn't go as well as I would have liked, but we would be the fun if it did. So I'm Alistair. I will see you in the next video.